Welcome back to HRNHQ. At least that's where I am, and I am joined by Kevin Kilroy, who's at FGHQ, the PB, the press box high above the New Orleans Oval. And his second year, Kevin, they brought you back. They brought me back. You know, I tried to talk them out of it, but they uh, they begged me. So I was like, all right. Well, who could say no to that? <laughs> well, we have to brag on you. It's understandable they would bring you back. If I recall correctly from being there on closing day, I do believe that your public picks when you were on air did show a flat bet profit for the meet. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, $2.07 ROI on those win bets there. So uh, that felt good. I know I had a uh, that closing week and I had like a um, – 18 to one or something to like that that came in that that helped to juice it you know cement Hugh Robertson's horse uh which felt good but uh yeah you know that's the worry right you get up here and you start giving people um advice to what to do with their money and you want to make sure it goes all right you know how it goes absolutely so it felt good but hopefully you don't have a sophomore slump because I've heard that's a that's a phenomenon out in, in in the real sports world you know yeah we're definitely looking more for uh Sam's town than Pinkerton I don't, I don't, I don't even know. No, what those no. No. Samstown was the killer's second record. Pinkerton was Weezer's. <laughs> anyway, we, yeah. what was the lesson you learned from your, your first year? I mean, you, you did well because you, you beat the meat, so to speak. But as the year went on, you were new, but doing it every day, hopefully you, you picked up some stuff. What What's something like, man, I wish I played this way or handicapped this way. In November, what were you kind of thinking in March that you had learned? Yeah, you know, I've been kind of I've been asking myself uh, that question and, and working to answer it all, you know, throughout the throughout the off season here, or off season for Bear Grounds. Um, and I'm, first and foremost, I'm a horse player, so um, I think uh, something I've worked on and talked about with that edge column with betting strategies was I didn't turn a profit, even though I was giving out uh, profitable uh, win picks. So. One of my main focuses, and this is something I keep on seeing really sharp people talk about, pros talk about on Twitter that I that I, I agree with, is how, how to bet. You know, it's one thing to put picks out there, but how to bet them is is a whole different story. So I'm going to try this meet to bring more of that to the um, to the airwaves, so to speak, and um, you know, offer people my thoughts on how I'm, I'm constructing tickets, how I'm seeing the card. You know, it's that macro view. Not just that race by race view that I think a lot, a lot of times we're missing in this um, in this side of the, of the game with the public handicapper stuff, the simulcast airing. So I'm gonna try to speak to that more. I mean, it's a good year to do it with the uh, the lower takeout at fairgrounds with the 15 yep. percent pick five and the new pick six. So hopefully that's attracting some money, um, and hopefully I can help people just get to you know have those conversations because for me it just becomes much more exciting, much more interesting when you start really getting into the game theory of it. Um, when you start really getting into starting to think about where the public's money is going and how you want to find separation, all those things Ed, that I know we've talked about a ton that you're, you're, you're hip to. So hopefully I can do better with that. Um, you know, the weirdest thing with, with let's touch on the, the new wagers. Uh, so I've seen it on Twitter. We've run press releases, but just to hit it home in this video, dollar pick six. Yep. No jackpot. Nope. Carryover provision if nobody picks six and yep. 15% takeout. Is that correct? Yep. And continuing 15% takeout, it won't juice up the takeout right. on the carryover. Non, so non Naira uh, approach, which is certainly appreciated. And then the pick five, which has had, uh, has evolved for the better through the years. We got rid of the jackpot, still had the yep. high takeout. But now this year, no jackpot and the low takeout, 15% on the pick five. Right. Right. Yep. And we got the early one, the late one every day. And then, you know, big stakes days with lots of races. We do. uh, We try to do an all stakes one. So hopefully there'll be three on some of those. days too. And speaking of big stakes days, have you drawn for the Louisiana Derby yet? Yeah, we already drew and Brad Cox (laughs) won. Um, So, it's you know, it's easy. uh, Well, and uh, that path to the Derby is uh, we've written about. And I know you're excited to be down there for uh, really solid at fairgrounds uh, at Epicenter. Last year, who ended up being the favorite in the Kentucky Derby, and I, I know that still haunts Mr. Steve, so I'm guessing uh, he will be ramped up this year to, to try to get back there and win it. But I, I'd imagine as, as fun as it is to pick winners, certainly to connect on those low takeout wagers, but also being there to see horses like that and horsemen like that has to be a, a pretty cool privilege all winter. Oh, geez, man. You know, I just – 
as you know, Ed, I, I came from from nowhere. You know, I wasn't in, in the industry before this job. So to jump in and, and uh, be able to hang out with with Epicenter on the regular, and then uh, you know, Zozo, Cyberknife, all those good horses coming through here, Zanin coming down, all that stuff was was uh, yeah, it was it, it was unreal. You know, so I, I look forward to that, and it definitely is a privilege. I think that's a good way to put it. Um, it's just a you know. It, it's, it's a neat sport, man. It's a neat sport. And it's even better when you are actually up close with the horses. So I'm going to try to spend more time on the backside this year. It was nice being on the, the Kentucky Derby notes team and being there at 5 a.m. every morning, hanging out with, uh, with, yeah, you know, with all the like coaches, watching them and, uh, and getting a better feel for how to, how to work the backside, how to, how to hang out with everybody, get more comfortable with all that. And, uh, um, I feel like, um, you know, the betting is is first and foremost in my mind, but uh, real close right behind it is hanging out with these, uh, sure. these big ass animals. You know, no, and it's good. Uh, you know, when I was at the track, I don't, I don't want to say appreciate a bad day or a bad stretch because those were never appreciated, but it did lessen the blow and just you know, it was nice to have a diversion. Like, okay, let's regroup on the wagering, but you know, we get to spend some time with these animals and the people who take care of them. And that's certainly a, a, a very fun part of the job. But winning money is, uh, I think, what we're all trying to do first and foremost. And I always think, t- for me, Kevin, the like first part of the fairgrounds meet, and I think we somewhat go through this like with Horseshoe Indiana- in Indianapolis, where John G. Dooley also calls. But it's like that first part of the meet where some of the bigger circuits are still open, Churchill's Keeneland when Horseshoe Indianapolis is maybe a little different horse population than we'll get to when January kicks up and those types of races. Uh, which approach to all these shippers and horses that are coming in and out uh, opening for the opening couple of weeks? Yeah, I, I think to be successful at fairgrounds, you've got to um, you got to be tapped into the Louisiana bred uh, circuit. It, the whole um, you know, the Louisiana bred system here is the whole program is um, it's impressive. You know, they've really got their ducks in a row. And they uh, they work hard to make sure that they've got spots for their horses to run, so they can keep on having reasons, you know, to breed them and make sure that there's uh, there's good stuff happening there. So if you are going to play these, uh, not only the first couple weeks, but throughout the meet, if you're going to play these multi race sequences, you've got to be able to be tapped in there. So you know, I, throughout the off season, I've been really paying a lot of attention to Evangeline Downs and Delta Downs mostly, but then also Louisiana Louisiana Downs and. Uh, yeah. You know, they're, they're quirky tracks, uh, specifically Delta Downs. So I think having a good sense for those tracks and what you're looking at can be key. A lot of times I know when we're handicapping, we uh, rely on the, uh, the sort of auto-generated stats that uh, mm-hmm. whether it's DRF or Brisnet or whatever you're using populates, right? It's like something with Delta Downs, you'll see a lot of times that it – I mean, for me, I read – you know, two turns, I, I think of that as as a, a separate beast in a one turn race, you know, and I, I know some people think it's distance. Right. And that's where they really they really um, judge things, engage things on. But like Delta Downs, that, that's a five for a long sprint. The rest of them are, are two turns. So that's yep. one thing you want to know, because a lot of times you'll see like a trainer stat pop up, um, sprint to route or route to sprint. And that's not actually the case. And then that's a bull ring track at Delta Downs. So a lot of a lot of horses don't take to it. So we will see some horses come over here that uh, will love the long stretch. Um, on the backside and the uh, the home stretch of fairgrounds, just the different course configuration. That's something to keep in mind. Um, I think one thing, you know, when you look at these races, a lot of times you think in Louisiana, state bred races, smaller, you know, um, smaller tier tracks, that the horses there aren't that quality. But, um, you know, there, there's some really strong horses that just make their owners and their, their connections livings by staying in the oh, yeah. system, you know? <laughs> And so you've got horses like, um, what's that one run? And there's one running here on um, Friday that I'm pretty high on. Um, bah, 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 bah. I can't remember any names, Ed, right now. My head is so fried. While you're looking at that, I am going to point out, um, and it, it's good that you mentioned Louisiana Circuit because ran some of our shipper numbers looking at only November at fairground, so specifically the first part of the meet. And a positive HRN impact for any horse who made its previous start in Louisiana during that opening month at Fairgrounds. And that includes uh, actually the most impressive stat, I would say, is actually from Fairgrounds horses themselves, which tells me that layoffs 
maybe aren't even that big of an issue coming into the opening part of the meet. But okay. other than Louisiana Downs, all the other Louisiana tracks have a positive impact. And then even including Louisiana Downs, the co collection of them all do. So locals, it seems, do have an advantage this first part of the meet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One, one big reason for that, I think, is that as you're talking about a lot of the uh, a lot of the other trainers who are still up in Kentucky, um, they're not on the track, right? But the local guys who are really uh, targeting this meet, they've been at the track, they've been training here, right? And they're yeah. focused on, on getting their wins. They know this is a prime opportunity to get some wins. I think we'll see that. Which I think Shane Wilson's going to have a big opening weekend Friday. He's got some. He's got some runners. He's got them spotted uh, very uh, appropriately. And um, I feel like uh, uh, Shane Wilson trainee is our debut of the day on Friday. What's your debut of the day? What's that? All about? Okay. That's the uh, Horse Racing Nation Fairgrounds. One of the ways we're working on our partnership, we're going to send you one horse who's a first time starter that we're high on based on our stats. Oh, damn. You're going you're gonna to just tease it or are you going to tell me who it is? Uh, I guess it's something Rebel in the fifth yeah, race. Right? I mean, you know me, I just want to dive right into this. Um, oh, yeah. I know he's got two in there. Um, she's a lucky rebel. That's it. Gets J-Love up there. He's also got the second-time starter, uh, Agami. Um, I know you guys have the great – I love the sire moves stats and the you know, trainer moves. And second time yeah. out is a good one for Shane Wilson. I think I saw that on um, on your sire move stuff. I love – No, he's, uh, he's shipped into Churchill a few times. Uh, varying success, as you would expect, but – uh, yeah, he, he definitely cool. seems to have designs on building a stable. Yeah, last week he wasn't so successful. I, I feel like um, I think he, I think he's fine tuning his stuff. You know, he's definitely a, a thinker and a, and a great horseman. You know, um, just had some bad racing luck last year and couldn't get the wins on some of them. So I think that's a big first day. I think they're you know they've got their horses on the grounds and they're, and they're aiming for it, which is huge. Um, yeah, horse, horse court close is the one I was looking for. Been running against a horse named High Cruise, and you know one of the races was like a, you know it's claiming five thousand into Y, and you're like, oh, that's nothing, no great shakes. But High Cruise is a formidable horse that wins again and again and again and runs mm. big numbers. But these these local tracks, they write you know races conditions that fit for these uh, horses to be able to stay and run them and right. run with their purses. So I think it's a really good idea just to check the uh, the running lines of those races that some of these horses you like um, were in and their, and their prior stuff on the Louisiana circuit and just, you know, DRF can be really helpful for you to see like past buyers, you know, you can just check that out and get a feel for it um, to see if they've, uh, those horses have had form if they're running, running big numbers, uh, even though the, uh, the class maybe looks low, um, just if you look at it with a quick glance. Now, uh, maybe in the early start of the meet, not as much turf racing as we've uh, come to expect at fairgrounds. So I wanted to look at jockeys, and I just specifically looked at dirt only. And I'm not sure when Brian Hernandez gets down there full time, uh, but Ray Lou Gutierrez also fits this category. Those two gentlemen, actually a flat bet profit last year in dirt races at fairgrounds, which given that both ride for big outfits, I know they take money, Calhoun, Brian rides for Dallas, et cetera. Uh, that amazed me that, you know, they're still booting home enough winners that they were a flat bet profit. And uh, based on HR and impact, Brian Culp and Aubrey Green, uh, which they may be at Oaklawn more this year. I'm not sure. Uh, but I thought it was interesting. Uh, two female jockeys leading by HR and impact on the dirt at fairground. So as always, uh, I would expect another deep colony this year. Yeah, it's a very deep colony. Yeah, I think that's that's interesting. I mean, you know, one thing I learned a ton about is just, um, you know, a lot of times we play the jockeys game, right? We play like I'll follow the jockey, but yeah. I didn't, really, I didn't really know the whole story of what I was, what I was following, right? When I was handicapping these that sort of things, and a writer like you know BJ, like Brian Hernandez Jr., he's really picking his spots, right? He's he's somebody who grew up here, his dad rode here, and um, he's able to, and he's such a quality rider. He's able to pick his spots and really get on horses that he wants, wants to ride on. And I, and I would guess he's got a flat bet profit on the turf as well. He had some big runners come in, some big numbers, um, cavalry charge, stitched, Kovax. I mean, all these sort of uh, $20 plus winners that came mm -hmm. in for him. Um, and Ray Lou as well. He brought home some Calhoun turf, turf horses last year. Saw Calhoun bring a lot of 
horses to the turf course and uh, they uh, they want it at really good prices. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, but yes, yeah, so they pick their spots. And then, I mean, Ray Lou's got a great agent, right? Jose Santos does great work. Oh, yeah. and it's, a, it's the same sort of version of picking your spots, right? When you've got somebody like that who's consciously building their brand and uh, trying to make sure that they're, uh, you know, his his riders are on the right horses to uh, to make everybody look better. Um, that's a lot right there. And of course, all agents are trying to do that. So um, getting a sense for the agent stuff, I think would be, um, maybe the best thing you could do as a as a horse player, and I'm I'm not tapped in there. But if I do one day, well, I'll see you spend more time on the back stretch. You'll certainly see him back there. So yeah, right. Yeah, I'll see them all back there. And Santa Fe is another spot. I think that maybe agents. <laughs> yes, and there. jockeys. I, I've seen everybody there: announcers, handicappers, jockeys. A uh, good spot for sure. Yeah, real quick day. Uh, Aubrey Green is going to be at uh, Tampa Bay. Okay. Uh, Angel Suarez are heading out there, uh, which is too bad. She's a fantastic rider. And yeah, so is no, she, so, um, and she, she was just great with the crowd. And I know Brianne's got a couple calls this first weekend, and I assume that she'll, she's going to be around. But, okay. uh, well, but maybe, maybe HRN she, says she wins more than the public expects her to. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Keep she goes really well. She goes really well. All right. Opening day, Friday, November 18th, racing all the way through uh, the end of March, Louisiana Derby weekend. Plenty of great stakes in between. And then every day, those two low takeout wagers, uh, I'm going to say totally brand new to fairgrounds. Pick five isn't, but the dollar pick six, 15% takeout on the pick fives. Uh, Kevin, looking forward to uh, your picks and hopefully looking forward to making some money. Yeah, definitely. Um, hopefully we can get some good uh, winners on top in there. But, um, you know, have you heard this thing before, Ed? Picking winners. Is something kind of like picking noses. You should stop doing it in public when you're in second grade. <laughs> Have you heard that before? I've not heard that. <laughs> I thought you'd appreciate that. I was I was stuff. thinking an, a nose or wedgie uh, reference was coming, but didn't know what would be next. So <laughs> no, so the, yeah, I think that's the, the thing that that's kind of my mantra right now is um, yeah, you know, putting horses on top is just something that's just part of the deal. But how right. to use those horses and how to see them in relationship. Um, to the other races is something that I hope that I can uh, bring to the uh, conversation a little bit more this year. And uh, hopefully we all can get a, get a better feel for uh, betting strategy, ticket structure and uh, game theory, all that sort of good stuff that feeds our, uh, our uh, feeds our brains as well as our, hopefully our pockets. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we have Joe K at Churchill through the end of its meet. You're flying solo. Uh, although I guess you'll probably do the uh, pre-race show with uh, duels. Yeah, duels and I will be doing it. We're going to skip the first weekend, uh, but we'll be doing that starting on uh, Thanksgiving. So we'll dive in there for the um, the pre-race uh, Fairgrounds Today show that starts, I think it's an hour before post time. Yeah, so tune in for that-ish, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be just trying to trying to, to help everybody uh, not only enjoy the races, but also uh, uh, catch some tickets. Love it. All right. Well, hopefully I will see you down there early next year on the road to the Munez presented by Horse Racing Nation. Uh, but in the meantime, I know we'll be in plenty of contact, sharing information, cashing tickets, and hopefully having a fun meet. Yeah, I look forward to bringing up that HRN stuff and giving people a uh, hip to all the good stuff you guys are doing there because that definitely has helped me as a, as a horse player. All right. Well, that's Kevin. I'm Ed. Fairgrounds is upon us. Good luck, everybody. <laughs>